KVEX Firecast TV. We're happy to be here at Belfry High School today. Belfry is one of the most recognized schools in the state of Kentucky. They're known for their academic prowess. They're also known for their athletic ability and their ability to work within the culture of the community here. Today, we're really excited to be here to learn more about Belfry, about their students, about their teachers, about the vision they have for the future. We're also going to pay particular attention to their STEAM program that is becoming more and more well-known and does some incredible things with kids. So welcome. We're really glad you're here. And if you will, let's get to know Belfry High School a little bit better. Welcome back. Um, again, we're really happy to be here at Belfry High School. and. Now we're in the STEAM lab at Belfry and we're with Mark Gannon, the principal here at Belfry High School who does an incredible and outstanding job. Uh, Mark, welcome to Firecast TV. Uh, so glad you took a little bit of your busy time to be with us today. Um, I just One quick question to begin with, um, what makes Belfry High School unique? What makes it special? Because it obviously is. I think there's many factors. Uh, but I think probably the number one thing is I think we're family. And I think that culture of family, of looking after each other, looking after our students especially, and just like with any family, I think you're willing to go above and beyond and do whatever you need to do to protect your family, provide for your family. So I think that's a, probably the best thing I could say is what truly describes us at Belfort High School. Yeah, and, and, and one of the things for me, it is such a well-rounded group of students here. You all achieve academic success, uh, success in special programs like music, uh, your sports programs are outstanding, the work you do in outreach in the community. Um, how do you create that environment of a well-blended whole child education program? It probably goes back to the, our students and the, looking at the needs of what our students or their desires. And I think with our, with our STEAM lab, I think that's the idea came from that is we've got some ideas, we've got some devices, we've got equipment, but we also have a need in, in our community, uh, in our society, that we're direction that we need to go in education. And in the last, this is my fifth year as principal. Um, I've been at Belfry High School my whole education career. But I think in uh, the five years now, we, our goal is to continue to, to in, be innovative, but also to make sure we're meeting the needs of our students, not just for today or a decade ago, but for a decade down the road. You know, that's a great transition to STEAM. Uh, we're in the STEAM lab. Um, why STEAM? How did you do it? What was the driving force behind putting this together? Last spring, talking with uh, one of our instructors, Dr. Chandler, um, and with one of our algebra teachers, uh, Virginia Bowling, uh, we, we discussed about the possibility of us creating something different for our kids. And we had a group of, of incoming freshmen that we had been told are very high performers, and we said, hey, this might be a good idea to start this, but this year, this group of kids. Uh, so what we did was we sat down started planning last spring and we said, okay, this is what we want to do. Can we do this? And the two teachers involved was like, yeah, we can do this. We can make this work and work with our counselors and scheduling. Um, also, looking at, if you look at the lab today while you're going to be here, you're going to see a lot of devices that you're not going to see in a normal high school. Uh, we have multiple 3D printers, drones, we have Lego robotics, we've got uh, wind tunnels, we've got two wind tunnels. So there's a lot of things going on in this lab that only a few kids were actually having access to on a regular basis. So we said, we need more students involved. We need to get more students involved in it. So that's that's where it really came from. And, I will, and I'm gonna give credit where credit's due. We've got two math teachers that when we, I said we wanted to call it the STEM lab. And, uh, and this classroom was actually Dr. Chandler's classroom. It was a lab and classroom. So we had to relocate him. Uh, through through KVEC, we applied for an ARC grant and with KVEC we were able to get it. So because of that grant, we said we wanted to create the, the lab. But two of our teachers, when we said, hey, we want to do a STEM lab, our two math teachers, Stephanie Younger, who works with KVEC uh, you know, a lot, uh, and Virginia Bone, uh, both of them algebra teachers, said, wait a minute, this needs to be STEAM. We said, STEAM, wait a minute, of course, myself kidding with them. But they, that was their goal. We said, hey, we want to put STEAM because the arts it is included. Uh, if you were yesterday in our English class, which our students are tracked in English and math and in the STEAM lab, uh, they were actually the English class that we, they performed a skit on short stories. So each of the groups mm -hmm. had a different short story. So we do see the arts coming through. Not only, you know, we don't have a separate art class, but the arts is defined multiple ways. So they're getting that art education not only in their English class, but they're also getting in here, designing 3D uh, printing, uh, 
uh, designing the product that they're printing as well. So it was their push. We call it STEAM, not STEM. But the focus was we feel like there's a need. You know, there's a need in, in our community. There's a need in our, in our region and especially in, in our country that this is the direction that education needs to go. And that's the direction we want to go. Yeah. Step by step, class by class, teacher and student by student. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really great. I, I, I like STEAM and that concept uh, where there's STEAM, there's obviously heat and there's passion lots of stuff taking place. Um, I wish we had some of the, uh, if the kids had, when they did the skits, if they had videotaped those, that would be great. We actually do answers. have. Uh, uh, Mrs. Chapin that you met earlier, uh, she videotaped on iPad yesterday, so she recorded, so, and I've mm -hmm. got some images, uh, but she was, we can share those out. And uh, I mean, there were short skits, but uh, in time safe, because we're meeting with her and planning for this, you know, we try to keep with our English uh, classes, well, all of our core classes, we try to basically, we're on, the, we got the curriculum that's the same, so we want them to teach the same content, how they teach us then. Her concern was about some of the English uh, content. You know, I may not get all this in at the other class. I said, that's okay. So for time sake, and for her, she said, instead of reading the whole class, reading all, all the, the six different short stories, she gave each group a different short story. But the, the, the expectation was the same. You had three days to get it done. They had to read it. They had to break down, identify everything from characteristics to plot to, to characters, the type. And then they had to do a skit. So, yeah. And in a couple of weeks, in uh, every other week or every third week, uh, Dr. Chandler's STEAM lab, the two-hour science lab, they actually have to present out their learning. And so they have to get up in front of their peers and mm -hmm. a couple of the adults in the building. We sit in, we watch what they do, we give them a little bit of feedback, and it's all about their learning. So that way they're reporting out. And the English class as well, uh, they, they blog. They blog out, so they're blogging about their uh, their learning, what's taking place not only in their English lab, but primarily what's going on in the lab. Right. Now, what about, uh, uh, what, what's the parent and, and community reaction been to the program? Uh, very positive from everything we've heard. Uh, we've actually, one of our parents volunteers, she actually sits in when they do presentations. She sat mm -hmm. in yesterday, uh, and it's her, one of her children. It's actually, as a freshman, she's got another junior, had one just graduate last year. So she has seen the trend over the last uh, three or four years herself, personally. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, and as a matter of fact, she, she posted on Facebook the other day uh, uh, about the uh, about the learning, uh, the opportunity that our students and, and teachers had with uh, Mr. Zuckerberg with, uh, at KVEC on Sunday. And it was a really a, a good point about how education is more than just test scores. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, and she actually referred to the gap score. She said, you know, this is dealing with the gap. And then mm -hmm. talking about how technology and different opportunities that we offer kids, not only us, but a lot of our schools in our region do, have the same. Uh, I think each opportunity at every school is different based on the school needs. And so there's a lot of schools in our district doing some great things in our region. You see it personally yourself. But I think there's a lot of things going on. We've just been fortunate enough to been uh, that I think we take advantage of every resource we can get internally and externally. Just one last question. Um, as a leader of a very progressive school, a transformational school, um, what advice could you give other leaders out there um, as they continue their work? Because I think you were really eloquent when you said every school and every community is unique and different and you work in that space. But what what advice could you give other leaders who are working toward the same goals that you have? Probably a couple things. One is learn to say yes to your staff. You know, <laughs> they come to you and say, hey, I'd like to do this. Uh, and, and it may not be something that I personally may want to do or our school in the past have done. But if you've got staff that are interested in doing things, then I think you got to learn to say yes. Yeah. And uh, and I think the second thing is that y'all, it really goes back to continuing learning as a leader. And we preach that to our students. We preach a growth mindset to them about, you know, it's not about just the grade, it's about growing and it's about the learning. But we also, I also personally try to preach that to my staff and is that we gotta continue to grow professionally. But as leaders, we all, we have to search for ways. We gotta search for ways. What's going on in our economy? What's going on in our state? What's going on in our nation to where how can we provide that? How can we make things better on our end? Because that we have the most important job, and we have a moral obligation to to provide for our, our students for the future. Like I said, I'm always impressed. Thank you Thank so you. much. Appreciate for you. Appreciate me your visit. With you. Thank you, sir. And Mark Gannon, exceptional principal here at Belfry High School. Um, been a great pleasure. Thank you. We look forward to talking with some the students, staff, your students, staff, sir. Uh, the most important people in the field. Exactly right. You tell me all the time. But thank you. Thank you.
we're here with Jenny Bowen, and Jenny is a mathematics teacher here at Belfry High School, uh, a critical member of the STEAM team. And Jenny, if you could, tell us a little bit about what makes Belfry um, unique and special. Oh, I love Belfry. I'm a Belfry graduate, so it's a very special place in my heart, but it's a very close-knit uh, family atmosphere. We also have a great group of students, truly amazing, who are willing to come here and put in a little bit of extra time and a little bit more extra critical thinking to do these certain projects. They kind of apply that to all the different areas, academically, athletically, and all the extracurriculars. In the way that you teach now, compared to the way that you uh, were taught when you were a student here, what's the difference that you see between when you were a student and the way that instruction is delivered now? Well, their instruction is delivered in a completely different way. They're in a flipped classroom which means their instruction, their notes and general teacher delivery is done through videos and they watch those either on their own time or here at school mm -hmm. and so that flipped version allows more time in class to work on practice work so if they need any help and we can also build on that like, critical thinking skills they can get more in-depth questions and more real-life application questions yeah. in the math. How did you learn about the flipped classroom? Oh, about four years ago, our principal had heard about it and came to me and said, hey, would you be interested in flipping your classroom? Mm -hmm. And I was just kind of like, sure, what does that mean? Uh, <laughs> and so I jumped on board. It's been a great uh, you know, net new technique to use with the students. Yeah. So. Now, do you make the videos? I do. The videos of you? Yes. And the students watch those at home? Walk us through that yeah. process just well, a little most bit. Most of the videos are about 15 minutes long. What that does is some students write faster, may already know a little bit, have a better background knowledge about the materials, so they can walk, work through the notes quicker. Whereas a student who also has the same 15 minute video may not be as familiar with the concept, may write a little slower, may need a little more time to process it, they can pause it and watch it their own pace. Yeah. And that kind of allows that individualized learning. So like they're allowed to kind of take that time, sink in, um, also, with the videos, they're able to kind of see what they can do on their own and then what they still might need a gap and they might still need me to help out with. Now, just one last question. If, if you could give some advice, some lessons that you've learned through this process to other teachers out there, what would you share with them about the STEAM work that you do or the flipped classroom concept or both? Um, it's okay to be outside your comfort level. You know, you're, that comfort zone's really nice and it's safe and we know what we're doing, but it's okay to step outside of it, take the plunge. It's okay to make mistakes with it and learn from it and make corrections and adjustments and do better in the next time. Yeah, that's, that is really great advice. You know, sometimes in education, we forget the fact that failure is part of the learning process yes. and that's critical to me. We really appreciate you being, taking the time to be with us. So these things right here are glyphs, and it's a little code this reads. It's like a QR code the robot will read, and it'll do different actions. So. For example, this is Glyph One. My name is Jamie. I am from the Bell Free High School Steam Lab. I am here to ask you a few questions. So I put your filling and then the variable item, and we're going to use uh, emotion description. So make your face, Caden. You are feeling happiness. So it detects like smiles, frowns. Frown. You're excited. I'm not a good frowner. Measurements are off a little bit. These tire rotations are measured. So that's one rotation. Every time it goes around, it counts as one rotation. So we have to measure how far the rotation is of that tree to be able to read that to tell it to stop and to throw that down. Then, after a second or two, I think we have set, we, you can either go degrees, rotations, or seconds. On this, for a color sensor endpoint, you have to 
add the reflected light intensity of this white thing with this black in the middle of this black line. You add them to. There's actually two numbers on the robot you can read. You add them up and divide them by two, and that goes into just one single little port of the color sensor. And everything has to be so right. And Miss Bowen and her class helps us know those measurements and how to do it. We learned how to do this in just four weeks. Our entire project is all based around electrolysis, which is kind of creating electricity using a chemical reaction. So we first started with this thing, this is called the Hoffman apparatus, and what it's doing is we put uh, sodium sulfate and water in here, and it's separating the water from hydrogen and oxygen. And we're using the oxygen, or, sorry, we're using the hydrogen to go to a fuel cell to produce electricity. I think the most we produce with this is a uh, quarter of a volt. Once we did that, we started kind of looking for other methods to create uh, electricity using electrolysis. Breaking off from this, when we went to the fuel car, this is using the exact same um, process of distributing um, molecules of water into hydrogen and oxygen. We use salt water for this one. It makes more of a um, chemical reaction with the way this works. Um, it takes Water is put into the fuel cell and it is put through and it puts hydrogen through here and goes into the water and produces hydrogen and it comes and bubbles out to there. And when you connect these two wires back here to the fuel cell, it runs that hydrogen that is collected in here into this engine and it'll make it go. Doc Arenas, in the, again, back in the STEAM lab at Belfry High School. Uh, Doc Arenas, I think everybody in our region and maybe uh, a much broader area, we, we just call Doc Doc. So um, it is not uh, rudeness on my part, but you are Doc to all of us. Okay. Um, if we could get started looking around here at this school today and at the work that we've been able to do in the past, it is pretty amazing that your work, your students are working with 3D printers, 3D scanners, uh, drones, uh, components associated with drone technology, building drones, um, working with um, uh, chemistry in a way to work for uh, capping agents for cancer cures, um, aviation, aeronautics, computer coding. Um, robotics, um, how in the world did, what brought you to this place to be able to create the, the STEAM concept that incorporates that range of activities? The, uh, the reason what, uh, why I thought of uh, looking into those aspects, uh, because this, this area is coal in, uh, mostly the coal mining and coal industry, uh, and now What's happening is um, it's depleting, uh, and though, so we want those uh, students here to know exactly. It's not always coal industry they have to uh, depend on. We have to look at the 21st century workforce, technology, and uh, our uh, coding. Uh, that's the future now. Uh, wherever you go, coding is very very important. If they know those concepts, uh, they they can look for some other jobs. Uh, that's the main. Uh, idea that we started looking to that program. Also, what what kind of early signs are you seeing about how uh, kids are benefiting? And I know for you, their learning is the most important. So, what are you seeing in these early stages about their learning and how that's changing? I've seen a tremendous progress in my. Th these are my freshmen who just came from middle school. Some of mm. them didn't have a lab to start with. Mm. They don't, they didn't know how to put things together. Yeah. Uh, but when you give them an opportunity, that's what I found that. Give them the opportunity and what they're passionate about. If you give those tools, you can see tremendous progress. Within three weeks, uh, the one that you see here, it can speak, it can converse, uh, it can do anything you ask for. Okay. And these are my freshmen who has done uh, made that robot to do something for them. Uh, 
I've seen this. Uh, this I uh, looked at. So it's only university students are doing it, uh, mm. and I'm very tickled to that that these kids can progress so fast. So the main thing is, passion. They are very passionate what they're doing, and if you give them those opportunities, they the sky's the limit. Yeah, and you know some of your students who built uh, the, the humanoid, the two humanoid robots. Yes. Uh -huh. One is named JD, and the other is Katie. Katie. <laughs> yes. uh, but they were telling me that they had taken the uh, humanoid robots to a senior center. Yes, senior citizen center. And yes. were demonstrating to the senior citizens uh -huh. using the robots to help the senior citizens begin to exercise, yes. and stretch, yes. and yes. move. That's pretty amazing to connect that to. Uh, your community in that very direct way uh, within three weeks within that's three beauty. weeks yes that's a beauty that's that's one thing I, I always uh, I don't know I don't have words to uh, because they are so passionate about what they do uh, and if um, other folks are interested in replicating a similar model in their school what what early advice could you give them as they begin to consider that how could what what would you like to share with other educators that you have learned through this experience? Um, it's 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 a passion that I have. I want my students to learn whatever uh, I've learned, and also I want to give it to them. I want them to be much better than me. Uh, so if you have that attitude, and you 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 can give them, and they will do. Anything you ask for. Uh, um, people came, uh, the kids came here and said, "Oh, this this is oh, it's going to be very hard, or uh, something we didn't know." I said, "Just get get on, get into it, and then see what you guys can do." I've seen girls taking drill bits and starting drill, starting mm -hmm. from day two onwards. So that that is the difference that it made for these kids. So they uh, it's, they say. If he cannot do it, I can do it. So that's what the girl said. Um, I, I, I can do all those. So for every uh, for those who are interested in doing it, make sure that look at uh, look at what the passionate uh, what their passion is all about. Give them the opportunity and then let them lose. Okay, don't be behind them and then give them the opportunity. They will make mistakes, but for every, uh, later on, you'll see the benefit. Yeah. Thank you so much. It is always a pleasure. Thank you. Join us next time on the next episode of Firecast TV when we'll be visiting another school in our region, discovering what makes them unique, what makes them special, what makes them able to serve the needs of their community and work toward the future and discover the excellence that exists in our schools and communities across Eastern Kentucky. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.